this is um, an exceptionally interesting topic because we're at the start of a revolution in, in so many different ways that might disrupt um, transport needs, the choices people make about their transport, um, and how people get around. And that would be driven by not just changes within the transport sector, but changes in the nature of work, the structure of labor markets, and where we produce and consume goods and services. Um, so one of the key trends that we looked at within Connecting the Country um, is the sort of electrification and all, autonomous uh, vehicles um, kind of agenda. There's quite a lot of work going on um, within our innovation team uh, uh, engaging with that agenda, working with the individual uh, sort of developers of that technology um, to think through what the impact of that is on the road how you, and, and enabling some of the sort of testing um, of those um, to enable um, that to, to happen. Many of the markets that we had first served, and I know I can talk to, to the other uh, commercial operators here in the southwest, are growing year on year. Um, for us, um, patronage in Bristol, here in Bristol, and in the wider West of England, Bath, North and Somerset, South Gloucestershire, um, and North Somerset, have been growing for four years continuously now. What's your view on fuels of the future, where you actually yeah. see the bus now, services going? Long term. Electric um, has got to um, come into, into play in, in big style. Um, problem at the moment is, yes, we've got all operate some electric buses, um, very, very high cost, and that's without the infrastructure piece. Question marks in some locations about the ability at the moment for the electric providers to provide sufficient power when it's needed to, for recharging at depot level particularly, but um, also the, the life of and gain duration of the battery still needs extending to make them a really credible, hard-working product. So my plea here today is very much that we need more infrastructure, we need to work with government to get infrastructure, and I've said many times, at times we are more efficient than national organisations at getting it sorted. So we've got some challenges. The biggest challenge I face is the budget. 80% uh, of the budget goes on adult and children's uh, health care uh, and services. I get a small chunk of that. For example, I have a, an annual road, sorry, not an annual road repair bill, but I have a, a road repair bill of 53 million and I have about 4 million to fix it, which means I have to prioritise. Right now, the government's giving us a lot of money for clean air to fix the NOx problem. But that won't fix the congestion problem. If you see the photograph of Cleveland Bridge there, if you transpose those cars which are petrol and diesel for electric, that's still congestion. Might be clean air, but it's still congestion. So we need to think very carefully how we are dealing with this problem and make sure that we don't substitute one problem for another. Today we talked about the ch future challenges for transport in the, in the southwest, um, the way that things will change with uh, different vehicle types. And I think what's really interesting for me is that in the southwest we get a real wide variety of both rural and urban contexts. And what I've heard today is that we're all grappling with the very same sorts of basic same problems but in different ways. And actually getting industry and government together to work on these issues has got to be good for everybody. I found today's event very useful uh, and the Transport Knowledge Hub as a whole is very helpful as a way of, of sharing uh, a good practice. It's always useful uh, to get away uh, to an event like this where you hear from a variety of people and I'm certainly going to go back and have a look at the Transport Hub website and see what I can take from it.